It's a common question. Should you pay off your mortgage when you have extra cash or invest it for retirement? Join Big Al Spitball on how Ms. Moneybags and her wife-to-be should use their upcoming windfall. Today on Your Money, Your Wealth, podcast number 436. Plus, what should Bob's asset allocation be as he nears retirement? Should Harley and Harleen do Roth conversions after tax rates increase? And should they take advantage of net unrealized appreciation, or NUA, on Harleen's company stock? Pete needs a 13-year retirement plan sanity check. Lauren wants to know if she can retire early or at least go part-time. And Michael and Carol want the fellas to spitball whether or not they're on track for retirement. Get your retirement spitball analysis here. Visit yourmoneyyourwealth.com, click Ask Joe and Big Al on air, and send the fellas a voice message or an email. I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson, CFP, and Big Al Clopine, CPA. Okay. Hello from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Minnetonka is. It is. Yeah, Lord Fletcher's used to hang out there okay. quite often. I have been listening in hanging on circa episode 30 or so. Wow. Ms. Moneybags. Right. Wow, that's a long time. It's a while ago. That's like 2014. Wow. My partner and soon-to-be wife, on the other hand, rolls her eyes every time I put any personal finance podcast on the air, but has snorted in a few chuckles during your podcast, Rouse. I oh. think your partner is intelligent to All right. really rise on I this show. I love that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, we've got a big word coming up here, Big Al. Can you do it? I, I'm, so. I'm, I believe in you. We are in a conundrum. Um, oh, you are so close. So close. Conundrum. Conundrum. <laughs> And uh, debating if I always like to put in extra syllables. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, I understand. All right. Makes it unique to Joe. Yeah. Uh, And debating if we should pay off our mortgage, invest all of the recent windfall uh, that will be coming our way, the windfall after taxes, fees, et cetera, will net out to approximately 1.5 million. Uh, We are both 53 and have been blessed with good carriers and see good careers um, and saving habits. Uh, we both plan on retiring at age 60 in order to piggyback on our employees' retirement health benefits once we retire. Our investments are in low-cost index, ETFs, and mutual funds with an allocation of 70-30 stock bond range. Annual gross income, soon to be wife, 100000 me, three to three fifty, depending on if I get a bonus. Wow. All right. Uh, savings total, $4.5 million. Total traditional IRA, Roth IRAs. Three million in a brokerage checking, and then ESOP one point five. That's pretty that's, impressive. That's, yeah, um, that's good. Those money bags. That's why it's money bags. Yeah, that's a big bag. <laughs> yeah, it's a big ass bag of money. <laughs> it's big. Taxes. Uh, the IRS and the state of Minnesota have, for the last fifteen or so years, sent us a thank you note every year since we've hit the top of the brackets consistently, and don't see that changing until we retire at age sixty. House. A couple of years ago, we remodeled our entire house, and after the dust settled, literally, our home was appraised at $1.7 million, currently sitting on a 30-year loan with an interest rate of 3%. The total monthly payments is currently $8,000, which includes principals, tax, and insurance. The balance of the mortgage is $1.3 million, home equity, four hundred grand. Annual spending after taxes is around $175,000, which includes... Our current mortgage and all discretionary and non-discretionary expenses, no debts except the mortgage. Annual savings. On average, we save about eight hundred plus or eighty thousand plus twenty thousand in employer matches, including one hundred thousand dollars across all of our accounts. We are confident, given our current savings, my soon-to-be wife's pension estimated to be twenty-five thousand plus a cola per year at retirement. Um, Social Security at seventy in seven more years of annual savings at our current rate that we'll have more than enough to cover the expenses, including our current mortgage and then some during our retired years. This is based on using a 6 to 8% rate of return, a 3% withdrawal rate, and inflation rate of 3.5, given our confidence and grasp of our cash flow and spending habits. Here is the conundrum. Okay, okay, okay. We, okay. We, were, we, we got to it. Good. Uh, all right. Given our low mortgage interest rate, In that we can cover our savings and expenses needs between now and when we retire. One, should we pay off the mortgage of the 1.3 and invest the remaining approximately 150,000, giving us free monthly cash flow of about 7,500 that would 
invest accordingly to our investment plan goals and tap into excess um, and tap into excess cash flow as needed. Or then should we continue to stay the course in our current situation, invest the entire $1.5 million according to our investment plan goals and tap into it as needed. So they're just getting this windfall here. And so the question with this windfall, do they pay out the mortgage or yeah. do they invest it? Right. Got it. All of that for that question. Yeah, that was, uh, could have been shortened a little bit. But we got a lot of color, didn't we? <laughs> oh, my God. And I do agree. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, whereabouts in Minnetonka do you live? How often do you go to Lord <laughs> Well, do, I will say. Do you have say, a boat? Do you cruise around? The, the name is correct. Mrs. Moneybags. I drive a 2015 Acura MDX, and my soon-to-be wife drives a 2012 Volvo XC70 that we plan to update with newer used cars when this windfall comes in at some point. Got it. Well, that's a chunk's going to go there. Oh, yeah. No kids. And in the process of adop- adopting a cute Labradoodle, my soon-to-be wife enjoys a chilled glass of wine, white wine, during the mosquito landing summers and red wine during the winter months. I love a tall glass of Uncle Val's gin and tonic. <laughs> Just a big giant jug of it because I'm <laughs> riches. <laughs> I, I got the money. And I just look at my bank accounts and just chug Uncle Val's <laughs> gin and tonics <laughs> while, while sitting by the lake. Oh, look how nice that is. Just I know. Killing at Lake Minnetonka. I, I can see it. A big jug of Uncle Val's. You know, I haven't been to that lake, but I've been to it. Oh, I, I can imagine. So beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much for your years of mind-blowing and informative spitballing, many laughs in Jode's word butchering moments. It's the best. Yeah, I, I blew up a couple just on yeah, this unit. <laughs> Pretty like wordy. Super close. Well, would you, would you pay off the mortgage with the... I would uh, keep the mortgage. Yeah, I would invest that money because they can already pay off the mortgage at any time. I know. So let's say, you know, something happens, them as money bags and the soon-to-be wife and the giant jug of Uncle Val's. Yeah, <laughs> the mortgage is at 3%. That's a, that's a great rate. Right. You know what? If you want to make extra principal payments... Like double up on your payments, sixteen thousand a month instead of eight. I'm okay with that, but yeah, no, I wouldn't use a lump sum to pay off something like that. Yeah, not a three percent. No, nah. no, I, I like liquidity. Yeah, I, me too. You know, as you're transitioning into retirement, you want to have liquidity there. So if it's all in the mortgage, yeah, and then it's like, okay, well, here now I want some liquid capital. Um, besides my retirement accounts and the ESOP account and blah blah and the Roth accounts and things like that. You want to have that diversification there so you can, and, and at some point, you know, if, if it's like, you know what, I, I don't want this debt hanging over my head. Well, guess what? You could cut a check and just pay it off. Yeah. And chances are, we don't know the details on the 3 million in retirement accounts, but I'm betting a lot of it is 401k or traditional IRA. So you're going to want to save a bunch of money for Roth conversions as your income is lower. So yeah, I think. Yeah. The 4.5 is. 401k traditional in Roth IRA. So we would say a couple bucks. Well, she's been listening since yeah. circa, circa 30. 30. What are we on now, Andy? Uh, 436. Oh. 400 episodes she's been listening oh my for. God. That's a, I <laughs> could, uh, this is a future wife going to marry you. I mean, I could see why you, you would roll your eyes. I, I can totally see that. Oh, my gosh. You know, she was thinking for so long. I can do it. I can no, do I can't. It. no, I can't. Yeah. No, I can't. No, I can't. All right. Well, let me just look at her checking account one more time. Okay. Okay. Yes, I can I do can. it. Yes, I can. And then oh, one, one podcast. I can't do it. I cannot do this. It's over. It's over. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, congratulations on the marriage. Congratulations on all your success. And um, no, thank you very much. All kidding aside, uh, to hang with us that long. That's great. Uh, I got Bob, New York. Goes, hello, Joe, Big Al, and the lovely Andy. Love the show. First things first, love a good bourbon. Drive a 2017 Ford Explorer. Have one golden retriever with a neurotic, but very cute. Who is neurotic? All right. I had a question regarding what my asset allocation should be nearing retirement. I'm 56, plan to retire at 60. My wife and I have 2.3 million saved in combined 401k, Roth IRAs, HSA, and taxable brokerage accounts. We save $60,000 a year into these accounts. We have $40,000 per year rental income, which will continue in retirement. We'd like to spend about 150 k 160 probably in retirement. Presently, my stock and bond allocation is 75-25, which I feel is a little bit too aggressive given that we want to retire in four years. 
Tell can lean a 6% return for the next four years. I plan on taking Social Security at age 62 because I have a young son who's disabled and want to take benefits early so he has money we can save for him when we're no longer here. What do you think? Is a good stock bond allocation for us in the next four years before retirement? Thank you for advice and insight. Well, we don't give advice on this program. Yeah, we just talk. And we just chat and spit yeah, like, a little bit. Like, Joe, if this were you, what would you do? Yeah, you know, just like a couple of kids hanging out, yeah, right. having a couple of cocktails, talking about finances. Right, right. All right, good question, Bob, because the se- sequence of return risk, once again, is kind yeah. of the, the bear of all evils when sure. it comes to retirement. So you don't want to plan for your allocation like the day before you retire. Right. You know, some some people in our industry like to call it a glide path. <laughs> and I hate that term. I just hate saying I, it or hearing it. I know it. you don't like it. You like, but, if, but if you have no plan. What's it's your as, glide path? It's as good as anything. Do you have a glide path? <laughs> so you glide right into it? Um, or some people call it like the retirement red zone. I've heard that. Oh, yeah. I've heard that too. Yeah. That's like five years before we, and five years after. I think we use that on our TV show. Yeah. Or 10 years before, <laughs> 10 years after. I know. We stole it from someone. <laughs> I'm sure. Um. But yeah, I think he's got to take take a look at the allocation. He's got two point three million. Yeah, so I did a little math. All right. So two point three million, uh, four more years, saving sixty thousand a year at six percent. He ends up with about almost three point two million. So let's let's go with that hypothetically. Hypothetically, yeah. Given given those assumptions, sure, right. So three point two million, age sixty. To be on the safe side, three percent distribution rate. Maybe you could pull out about a hundred thousand. You got forty thousand coming in from rentals. You're one forty. You're really close here to, to making that work. And that's uh, that's before social security. Well, social security at sixty two. Do we know what that is? No, we don't. So yeah, this so so probably probably it works just fine. But the real question is, uh, what should be the, the allocation, allocation to get to get there? Right, seventy five twenty. What's it? What, what do you got for a shortfall, Al? Uh, without social security, about 10 to 20 grand. 20,000 needed from the portfolio? No, no. Uh, I, I just, I did it the other way. I said that 3.2 million could give you about at a 3% oh. could give you about a hundred. Okay. He wants 160. Yeah. He wants, and so, then he's, so, so, so he's got it. 150, 160. He's got $60,000, um, coming or $40,000 of rental income. Yeah. So he needs 120. Yeah. 120. So let's take 120 into 3.2. So that's a 3.7% distribution rate, which is a little high at 60, but that doesn't include social security. So um, it should be just fine, likely, right? Yeah. Okay. So here's another way to look at it, depending on how Bob feels about his his risk. Yeah. So let's say he needs, let's just ignore social security because we don't know what that number is. Yeah, we don't. You're right. So he needs $120,000 a year. That is the, that's the demand for the the portfolio, yeah. right? Plus taxes, plus a cost of living. That's but right. I'm just going to keep the math really easy so Bob can do this at home. Yeah, that's right. So, hundred twenty thousand dollars. Let's say he's pretty conservative. So it's like, all right, well, I want ten years of safety. Okay. So I'm going to retire at sixty two. So at age seventy two, I want that ten years where I'm not worrying about stock market volatility. I know that I have a very safe safety net. And I know that over a 10-year time period, that stocks usually go up. Right. Okay. Do you agree with those assumptions? Sure. So then you would take 120000 times 10 years. Yep. Is $1.2 million. So then you take $1.2 million, and then you can divide that into $2.3 million. That's his total nest egg today. Right. Right. But you said it's going to be what? Three something? Three, two. And I guarantee it's going to be a 60-40 split. Yeah. Um, 3-2. Yep. Okay. That's, a, that's at a 6% return. Yep. So 40% bonds, 60% stocks. If you have 40% safety, short-term bonds, treasuries, CDs, cash, 40%, that will give you 10 years of very safe assets that you can draw from if the market just takes a total dive yeah yeah i 100 percent agree with that and and another way to think about this is, is if you take that 1.2 million into what you currently have now you're going to have to have more bonds and stocks and i'm not sure that that gets you to where you want to be 
So you can look and say, all right, well, I'm going to forecast 6%. I'm, but 6%, even at a 50-50 split, you're probably getting 6%. You, you could given where fixed income is today and given depending on where where markets go over the next five years you could but i i just think it's a little more likely to have a little bit more equity in there given historical trends but okay. but you don't you don't know you don't know I, I mean i think the numbers look good i think i would probably do 60 40 myself it because i want to have enough juice in it to get to this target but i also agree with your analysis what do you want to end up with to make sure you have 10 years like if the market goes down for a year after year after year at least i got this money now i know it's you're not living out the income you're selling the bonds or bond funds to be able to to, to but live you're, you're not selling but stocks not, when they're down correct that's the key yeah. right it gives you better discipline you just have to keep it out of sight out of mind yeah and say all right well the market's down 10 20 30 percent a lot of people will look at their ent the entire portfolio and freak out sell everything go to cash that's right right you can't do that especially in retirement because this is your nest egg this is you're not going back to work and if you believe in markets that markets you know go up and go down it's been volatile you know he's in his 60s accumulated a lot yeah. of cash right so he understands markets sure so but once you retire and start living off of this stuff you forget everything that you've learned throughout your life in in regards to investing yeah and some people go completely the other way they go 100 percent safe realize forgetting that they're going to live another 25 years or longer right so that's what I would do. That's the math. You just kind of take a look at, all right, well, maybe 10 years, maybe it's seven years, maybe it's 12 years. You want enough safety there to give you the shortfall that you need, right? And then that would be your stock bond allocation. That's how we would kind of look at it. Or you want to take the least amount of risk possible to get you the, the return you need. Yep. How much money do you need in retirement? And how does your retirement account balance stack up right now? What's your contribution rate? How much of your portfolio should be in cash? How should your invested assets be allocated? Learn how to answer these questions and find out how to manage your assets at any age with our Portfolio Tracker Guide, available for free download from the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com. Just click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app to get there. You can say thanks just by spreading the love and sharing the knowledge. Tell your friends and colleagues about YMYW and all the free financial resources. Hi, Joe and Al. First off, I love your show. Nice. I have been a full-time podcast listener for over two years now, and I think you guys are dope. What's a full-time podcast listener? I was going to ask that. What is that? It's not part-time. It's yeah. not half-time. That, that means, means he's listening to the show eight hours a day? No, that means when it comes out, he's he, it's like live. He's in there. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Dope. Uh, but let's give credit where credit is really due without any of you guys would be out of control yeah we used to be without andy and yeah, it, it was, was out, out of control, control. It was yep, terrible that's true uh my name is harley 64 years old and retired at 62 my name my wife harleen is 65 years old and retired at 60 i'm guessing he drives a harley i'm guessing too i like it uh, we live in california i drive a 2019 suv and my wife drives a 2011 suv i love a cold hefeweizen beer in a frosty mug and my wife loves a good stout okay right assets 5.4 million at least you didn't start with that harley. yeah I was... <laughs> usually hi my name is harley you got five, five, five and a half million <laughs> love your show then we tune out <laughs> we have over 2.7 million 1.2 million wife has 1.5 in traditional 401ks which includes three hundred thousand dollars in a raw four hundred thousand dollars company stock 85 percent of the 2.7 is invested in the s p 500 index funds and the other 15 percent or so is in company stock Additionally, we have six hundred thousand dollars in a brokerage account, most of the stock and index funds. Six fifty in cash. Our house is paid off worth one point four, no debt. Okay. Income one hundred twenty thousand. Expenses one hundred ten thousand. I receive a single life annuity pension of seventy thousand dollars a year, no cola. And my wife started Social Security at sixty four to receive twenty six thousand dollars per year. We earn another twenty four thousand per year in bank interest and fifteen thousand in dividends, capital gains each year. With the pension, Social Security, bank interest, and stock dividends, we have enough to cover our $110,000 expenses each year. I will postpone starting my Social Security until age 70 and will receive $55,000 per year. I chose 70 to ensure my wife has the largest survivor benefit since I do not choose a, I did not choose a survivor benefit on my pension. All right. Good thinking, Harley. Yeah, very good. Additionally, because I have no pension survivor <clears throat> option, I took on a life insurance policy for 10 years, 
bucks a month to get me to age 70. Uh, we have no plans to touch our investments in why we are in 100% stocks. RMDs will start at age 73, expect uh, 4.2 million, uh, which includes at least 500,000 in Roth uh, if we don't convert it all. Before the tax rates revert back in 2026, we're thinking about converting seventy-five dollars to $100,000 per year in Roth. We plan to convert my wife's 401k, which has the company stock, to a traditional IRA in leveraging the NUA option for the $400,000 of company stock and paying the ordinary income tax on $100,000 basis of our company stock. My two spitball questions are, should we do conversions to Roth beyond 2025? And if so, up to what tax bracket in what age? Secondly, <clears throat> for our situation, is leveraging NUA a good idea? And if so, would it also be smart to purchase another $200,000 of company stock in my wife's 401k, which will increase the basis from 100 to 130, but will further reduce our RMDs? Uh, the thinking is it's cheaper to pay ordinary income tax on the extra 30000 versus the ordinary income tax on the 200000 when we sell for RMDs. I realize there's risk with having that much money invested in company stock, but we are confident this company will continue to be an industry leader. This will give us $600,000 to today's dollars in company stock, in which 470000 would be treated as long-term capital gains. Wouldn't if we ever decide reducing our overall RMDs. Thanks for the great shows and continued success. Wow, great job. All right. So he's got a ton of dough. He's done a great job. Five and a half million bucks, 64. He's got 10 years roughly until his RMDs. Right. He's got enough money in his pension, Social Security, dividends, interest to cover his monthly nut. Correct. And so he's got this, in, or his wife he has an interesting tax play, which is called net unrealized appreciation. So he's considering doing that as well as Roth conversions. So right. let's kind of break down NUA, Al. Okay, yeah, let's start that. Uh, net unrealized appreciation, NUA for short. So here's an opportunity when you have company stock in your 401k, right? You have an opportunity generally at retirement is to, you know, you, you can leave your money in the 401k, but a lot of times people roll it to an IRA. But the part that company stock, part that you have in company stock can actually go right to your brokerage account, not a, not an IRA, not a Roth IRA, go right to your brokerage account. And here's what happens when you do that because it's company stock, whatever you paid for it. So in this case, let's just say the stock is worth $400,000 and you paid a hundred thousand. They paid a hundred thousand dollars, right? So a hundred thousand dollars is what you paid for it. That's what you pay taxes on currently. Hundred thousand dollars is added to ordinary income in the year you do that NUA. It goes from your four hundred one k to your brokerage account, not your IRA to your brokerage account. You still have a stock though worth four hundred thousand dollars. So when you eventually sell that stock, you will have $300,000 of gain. The year that you sell it, you have long-term capital gain, which is a lot lower tax rate than ordinary income. And in many cases, it's about half or less the ordinary income rate. So there's an opportunity to save quite a bit of taxes when you've got highly appreciated company stock inside your 401k. So that can be a great option. Now you will add $100,000 of income the year that you do that, but not 400,000 of income. And then you have control over whenever you sell that stock as to when you pay the tax on that. So that that's the that's the strategy. And and what do you think, Joe? Good idea in this particular case? Well, he, he thinks his income is 120, 132,000. So he's in what, the 22% tax bracket. So yeah. adding another 100,000, he stays in the 22 to move $400,000 out of a retirement account. Yeah, it's kind of a no brainer. But let's say if they keep Here's what happens quite a bit because a lot of people are not familiar with this overall strategy. They keep the money in the stock and then they sell it and they it, and they'll diversify. Right. So in this case, they bought it for a hundred thousand is the basis. It's now worth four hundred thousand. So the three hundred thousand is the net unrealized appreciation of that stock. Right. That can be taxed at capital gains. If he keeps it in the retirement account, everything that comes out of the retirement account is taxed at ordinary income. Correct. If he diversifies out of that stock, he loses the net unrealized appreciation forever. Right. So moving the money out, adding a hundred thousand dollars of ordinary income, he's still in the twenty-two percent tax bracket. Four hundred thousand comes out. You pay capital gains tax on it all good do that all day long 
yeah. because they have so much money in retirement accounts. And and if you want to start to diversify, then then you can, right? Because you can sell it. Then <clears throat> sell it. Your capital gains sit on top of your ordinary income. So you're in the 22% bracket or 24, whichever, it doesn't matter. And then if you do a cap, if you sell half of it, let's just say, and so you have $150,000 of gain, let, let's just say, then in that particular case, you pay capital gains on 150,000, which would likely be the 15%, it could be 20. You might have uh, some of that net investment income tax to, on top of it. So you got to, and state taxes, you got to calculate all that, but you can diversify. It's not going to change your 22 or 24% tax bracket. So- his other question is confusing to me because if he buys the stock today, two hundred thousand dollars, that's his basis today. Yeah, that we're missing something here because because what what he's what he was inferring is he could buy another two hundred thousand dollars of stock for thirty thousand, which is not possible. Right, that's a pretty deep discount. <laughs> I would do that any day of the week. You would be Let's a multi billionaire. I'll take I'll take I I'll take a million dollars of that stock and I'll I'll give you 150 yeah, grand. 150. So because he's adding 200,000, he's buying the stock today, the basis is the price today. Yeah, right. I, I don't It's get not fast that uh, be, I mean, he might be thinking it's it's based on the the I don't know what he's the, thinking. The cost of yeah. the the initial so, purchase. So so that unless we just don't understand what's going on here because we're going with what we <laughs> well, what we read and what we what we saw uh you're you're limited to what you already have or your wife's limited she's got four hundred thousand dollars more stock she can but then the, it, it, it's not highly appreciated it's not highly appreciated it is what it is it is so you buy two hundred thousand dollars of company stock in your 401k plan today and then you do an nua you're gonna it's the same thing it's the same thing it's ordinary income yeah. coming out on the basis how this works is because it's highly appreciated with over the company over, for years. over what you paid for it so if you if you're in that situation this is a great strategy i will say not too many people know about this a lot of advisors don't know about it. a lot of accountants don't know about it a lot of custodians don't know about it it's so hard sometimes to get the custodians no this is what this is right this is what i'm doing what i don't understand okay <laughs> <laughs> Can I talk to your manager? Uh, right. But um, but yeah, I like that. And you, you want to still continue to do um, conversions. I, I One of the things that I don't necessarily like is, is how he's managing the income because he could be more tax efficient potentially because it's like, all right, now I'm taking the dividends. Maybe I'm buying a little bit more dividend paying stocks. It, it seems to me his, his expenses are 100, 110, but he has more income. Yeah. And if he's reinvesting or he have interest in, I have this and then if I'm just reinvesting it, you might want to be a little bit more tax efficient to keep that stuff off your tax return sure. as you're doing Roth conversions, because you're, you can convert more dollars if you have less income on your tax return that you're not actually using to spend on other you know, goods and services. Yeah. So right now, uh, as we do this broadcast, the top of the 24% bracket for a married couple is $364,000, right? So you can do a huge conversions and stay in that bracket. In 2027, uh, I should say 2026, when things change, the tax rates revert to what they were before, or that's what's scheduled. Who knows exactly what's going to happen? So you, you really won't know the answer of 2026 and beyond until we get there and we know what the tax rates are. Right. But even if even if the tax rates change to what they had been before, there's probably still some opportunity, maybe not as much. And so you're going to have to see when you get there. Well, let's say he's got $3 million roughly in retirement accounts at 62 or 64, 10 years from now. Yeah. At 3 million, 6 million. Yeah. The, yeah. Four times six is $240,000 of an RMD. Yeah, all of a sudden. Plus his pension, plus Social Security, plus interest, plus yep. dividends and yep. everything yep. else. He's going to be in a giant bracket. So you want to get as much as that out. Probably in the 22, 24, I think makes makes a ton of sense. Yeah, and, and even past that, I mean, maybe it's going to be 28%, but you got to look at that. All right. We got Pete from Alabama here. Hey, y'all. This is Pete from Alabama. Love the show. <laughs> uh, I think we're on track. But a sanity check is always appreciated. Uh, my wife, 45, I, 47, have been married for 24 years with five kids, two in college, and one each in high school, middle school, and the youngest is in third grade. All right. Damn, I'm his age, and he's got five kids. <laughs> been married for 24 years. And you thought you were overwhelmed you're, with two. Yeah. You're, you're just getting started here, oh, brother. Oh, God. Yeah. I drive Hondas and Toyotas. <laughs> I drink mostly bourbon. 
I, I get that. <laughs> I get it. I get it, brother. Every day I'm pounding bourbon. <laughs> but for the summer, my wife and I enjoyed a drink called Sex on the Driveway. Ever Have heard you? of that one, Joe? No, yeah, that's... I'm gonna it's, it's gonna happen this weekend. <laughs> Remind me not to drive by. Uh, peach schnapps, <laughs> little uh, blue carousel, uh, coconut rum, vodka, and Sprite. Okay. Kim. I'm going to do a little Get, sex on the driveway. Kim. Our current expenses are between $10,000, $12,000 a month. We invest twenty five to 30000 annual. Um, I'm projecting our retirement expenses around the same, less for kids, more for travel. I'm a federal civilian and already receiving a military pension at $70,000 annual. I'll probably work until I'm 60, 13 years from now, when I receive another $24,000 plus raises. All right. Well, thank you for your service. Okay. Uh, Currently, our Social Security estimates are $4,000 a month for me at 70. My wife will use that for hers. I believe that means she gets $2,000 monthly. Uh, We waived the SBP. And bought a million dollar life insurance policy on me until 70. Uh, so a couple of people are yeah, kind of getting kind rid of, of the old, um, yeah. you know, f- survivor benefit there. Mm-hmm. Didn't I've never heard of that S- little SBP, SBP though. Yeah. yeah, I know what he was talking about, but right. <laughs> these all have colas, so that helps out a lot. The military pension also includes health insurance. Okay. Current retirement investments hundred thousand dollars in a regular brokerage, three sixty my IRA. 150 Roth IRA, 270 in her Roth IRA, 150 in my TSP, which is about half Roth, almost entire equities, 25,000 international, 40 large cap, 35 small cap, et cetera. House has 250,000 in equity. We're currently paying a 30 year 2.25% mortgage, which will uh, move before we pay off, which will move out before we pay off. Um, We would like to buy and move to a lake house. When our youngest graduates high school and we're contemplating a house or a villa at our favorite vacation destination, which will, which we could rent out during the peak season, May through September. Uh, together, these will probably cost between one and one and a half million. That's the part that gives me pause. I don't mind having a mortgage in retirement if the rate is under 5%, but this would bump up our expenses. We'll probably use the 4% rule of thumb with flexibility in a couple of years in short-term bonds. I hope I included all relevant information. Okay. <laughs> I got everything but a question. <laughs> I think the question is, he said, it. I think we're on track, but a sanity check is always yeah. appreciated. Oh, right. Right. So is he sane? Yeah. Is Pete from Alabama sane? Right, okay. Let, let's That's just, the question. Let's just let's, sanity check. Let's just do this. Hundred, uh, roughly 100000 of fixed income before Social Security. Wants to spend 120 to 150. Okay, yeah. let's call it 150. Okay, probably have about a million dollars liquid as of today. Maybe a couple million by then. Maybe. So he's got yeah three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he's got about a million yeah. bucks in liquid so, assets so let's today. Say Two million then, um, and that's at age what 60. Yeah, well, we, I'll use even three percent, 60 grand on top of the hundred fix. That's that's one. That's 160 spending 150. Now, of course, you got to add inflation. I'm, I'm being way simple here, but at least on the surface, and then you add Social Security, it seems like there's plenty uh, to work with here. So, Our, so my first sanity check is I think it looks pretty good. So he's got 250 in in equity. So he's yeah. going to sell the house. He's going to roll that into a little lake house when the yeah. kid gets out of high school. Um, so that's 250. So he's got to have a mortgage of another 1.25. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Cause you take the 250, subtract it from what he's going to pay. So, so I'm going to say 1.2 million. And then let's say it's a 30 year fixed. I'm going to give him uh 5% cause okay. who knows and right. zero future value. He's got a payment here of 6,000 a month. Does that sound right? One five at six percent present value zero future value 30 years six percent is a little high yeah it does doesn't it we can play some jeopardy music i, love I was gonna say i'm gonna have to <laughs> fill some time here as you guys furiously tap <laughs> away on the <laughs> hp 12 c's <laughs> no, I, I screwed it up anyway that here's the answer <laughs> the answer is 
in 13 years from now, when you actually know what the numbers are, then you got to look at how much how much money you have coming in a fixed income, what your portfolio is, use a three or 4% distribution rate, add your your new mortgage to your expenses and make sure this still works out, right? And, and then your cushion is you got social security coming. So you can be kind of a little bit over in terms of distribution rate for a few years, uh, counting on social security to come and, and, and kick in. So it's it's probably a little early for us to answer that. I I guess I guess I agree though. I would I would have a little pause myself based upon kind of what we know. Right. <clears throat> because it's it's the villa and so you got the villa and the lake home. Yeah. So you got to work that out depending on where interest rates are. At at 6%, you know, you're looking at a a pretty big number, about $7,000 a month. Just principal and interest yeah you're actually that's about right um it's just funny to calculate with those I, high interest rates, i know right? so, yeah we're used to <laughs> wait no, this, is, this is like double what it's supposed to be <laughs> right i'm like well this can't be and right. my first mortgage was 12 and a half percent so i mean i but that was a long time ago so all right so let's say he's got another seven to ten thousand dollars just in debt service carry service taxes or whatever yeah for the the villa but he's going to get some cash flow from that when he rents it out so yeah you got you've got to factor that you got to factor that in Social security will and, help offset it i i think he's pretty close i think he's done a really good job i think there's a lot of fixed income there um yep. it's just mapping it out just a little bit more but you know he still has time Luckily, you don't have to decide tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he thinks RMDs will start at 73. Expect Okay. No, that was someone else. Pete from, uh, yeah, I don't know. Pete, I like I like your plan. Yeah, and I and I like your caution. I think you should have, you know, be thinking about whether this actually works or not. Uh, right now, based on what you gave us, it's it could work. It's close. It it, it may work. It, it but the but the the real point is when you get closer, you'll have real numbers and you can recalculate and figure out what you really can pull out. Right, but he's super close. So I mean, if he starts going to be shopping around and thinking about or or, or daydreaming about the villa, <laughs> go for it. Didn't have that sex on the driveway. There you go. Probably which you have to pick which at driveway. the lake home. <laughs> yeah, you got to pick which driveway you're going to have sex on uh, yeah. the. Repeat snaps <laughs> the blue carousel. Got it. Yes. Before you make any big decisions about retirement, schedule a free financial assessment with one of the experienced financial professionals on Joe and Big Al's team at Pure Financial Advisors and get a handle on your real numbers. They'll take a deep dive into your entire financial picture rather than just spitballing on the fly. From Roth conversions and tax planning to social security optimization and investment management, they'll uncover all the best strategies for your situation. And they won't try to sell you any products or charge you any commissions because they're fee-only fiduciaries who have to act in your best interest, not theirs. Meet in person at one of Pure's seven offices in Southern California, Seattle, Denver, or Chicago, or via Zoom right from your couch. Schedule your free assessment now. All you got to do is click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app, go to the show notes, click get an assessment. Pick a time that works for you, and away you go. Got Michael and Carol from Las Vegas. Hello, Joe and Big Al. Love your podcast in would appreciate your spitball and a plan to leave the workforce at 62. Currently, both my wife and I are 59 and live in Las Vegas, Nevada. No state tax. I would like to leave my unrewarding and unfulfilling job in three-ish years at 62. Unrewarding and unfulfilling. Yeah. Sound familiar, huh? <laughs> when can I leave, Jay? <laughs> at 62, this, this would make me eligible for 40% of my company's split dollar annuity. I must work for a small company. Split dollar. I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, no, that's right. Exactly. You're going to have uh, to explain what that is. Now, that would pay out $22,000 for 20 years, starting at 67. Uh, after making numerous poor life choices, uh, we have successfully managed to save a modest sum of money. Uh, my spouse is not employed and should qualify for spousal benefits. Uh, my annual salary amounts to approximately three hundred or two hundred thirty-seven thousand uh, dollars, completed by bonuses totaling around fifty k. Unfortunately, I'm limited to contributing only six and a half percent of my salary to the company's four hundred one k plan. Uh, that's a little top heavy, yeah, or, or the other one that we <laughs> that we missed up. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get corrected on that. <laughs> now he's highly compensated, I'm guessing, uh, compared yep. to his other um, employee. It would, it would appear. 
Yep. All right. Uh, with the inclusion of the profit sharing plan and the employer matches, I do manage to add to the 401k annually about $40,000 to $45,000 a year. Um, I opt to redirect my contributions to the Roth 401k. Currently, our expenses are roughly $85,000 per year in today's currency. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Three dollars. All right. Uh, my wife and I also have Roth accounts outside of my company that we max out via backdoor. Also, have this writing. Um, it is $7,500 each annually. I am also thinking I need to save as much as uh, as much cash as possible to bridge the gap. Uh, what I need between 62 and 65. Healthcare is one of my uh, concerns in the gap years. So currently I'm adding to high yield accounts about $52,000 per year or $2,000 a paycheck. Also, we have zero debt except the mortgage. We lower the highlights. Okay, got expenses, 85000 Keeping score, Al? Yeah, everything else about $1.7 million. All righty. We plan on taking Social Security at sixty five, at which would be about $3,000 for me, $1,500 for my wife. Uh, the plan is to leave the workforce. I will roll my 401k uh, to IRAs and then begin pulling $45,000 out annually to cover the projected health care cost of $18,000 and pay the mortgage twenty seven. dollars All other expenses will come from the brokerage account. This will attempt to keep my income low for tax purposes. And once we apply for Medicare, I'm open to go back to work, but it would be on my terms if I brought my employment back. Okay. My wife and I like to travel and volunteer. I enjoy bourbon and golfing. Oh, we're two peas in a pot. That sounds brother. like you, Jeff. Let's go. <laughs> uh, my drink of choice is Maker's Mark on the Rocks, and I drive a 2020 Ford Eagle. Sorry, no, it's wordy. But I think I got everything covered. Many thanks for your spitball on my plan. Okay, so let's see. Fast and loose with the spelling and wording there, oh, but that's well. fine. Okay, they're 59, once retired, 62. So they got about three years. Got 1.7 now. Maybe they'll have in three years, I don't know, call it 2.1. Yep. 2.2. Well, he's saving, yeah. Yeah, 80. Um, uh -huh. Well, Matt's, yeah, let's call it 2.2. So he wants 85,000 out of 2.2 million. We'll just go with the total expenses. That's a 3.8% distribution rate. It's under 4%. You kind of like to have, you know, 4% when you're 65 and older, but it's pretty close. And that also doesn't really consider $4,500 a month in Social Security. Yeah. So, so then that will bridge that. And his, yeah. his distribution rate, when he starts claiming Social Security, is going to be 2%. Like 2% or less. Yep. Yeah. So plus yeah. tax. So I guess. It it looks like this plan probably works. Yeah, um, and, I like it, and especially working part time to bridge the gap years. That's like that's a great idea. I, but I mean, I think he's. It's like, all right, well, here I'm going to keep my taxes low because he's got an Irma play here. Yeah, is what I'm seeing, and yeah. then he's like, okay, well, once then he wants to go back to work at age 65. I mean, I don't know why you would want to go back to work at age 65. You would want to work prior to 65, at least part time, because then you could probably get a little bit of medical insurance. Yeah. But he's trying to keep his, his expenses low because he's what playing the whole healthcare game. And the um, could be, could be get that uh, little, little Obamacare. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the Affordable Care Act. Right. Yeah. And plus, we didn't, we don't have time to address it, but Roth conversions will be important as you got over a million dollars in a 401k. So that's something you want to do during your lower income years. Yep. All right. Lauren from Illinois writes in. Hi, Joe Big Al. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you. I am a 33 year old female and wondering when I can retire early or drop down to part time and stop contributing to my 401k. I currently make $125,000 a year and max out the following accounts each year. 401k, Roth IRA, and HSA. Also contribute $1,500 to a taxable brokerage account monthly. Currently, I have $200,000 in my 401k, $70,000 in the Roth, $170,000 in a taxable brokerage, and $10,000 in my HSA, and $30,000 in a HYSA. Okay. I own my own home. It will have it paid off by the time I'm 40. Is part-time work at 40, retain health insurance, and full retirement at 45, 50 possible? Am I missing anything from my plan? Thanks. All right. So let me yeah, uh, let me maybe summarize this one. If we if we leave off the HSA's accounts, there's about 450,000 currently, right? Okay. And I'm just gonna say Lauren's gonna save 30k a year, just to throw in a a, a number close to that. Seven years, seven percent. So she'll probably end up with about a million bucks. 
Okay. So that's what you that's what you have to work with, Lauren. A million dollars at age 40. We would probably say a distribution rate of two and a half percent, maybe maybe three if you want to stretch it. That's twenty-five to thirty thousand a year available of income. Of income. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you're spending right now. I'm assuming it's it's probably going to be more than that. But but let's just say you're spending forty thousand dollars right now. You want to do a two percent inflation factor? Maybe it's fifty thousand in seven years. Whatever the number is. Well, she makes one hundred twenty-five, right? I know, but right, but and she's saving a ton, and there's taxes, so it, it, we don't really know what you're spending. But I, but I think you can count on your portfolio to give you twenty-five to thirty thousand a year, and then you got to figure out what's the shortfall that to, that you make up right from part-time income. And so maybe it's twenty five thousand a year, maybe it's forty thousand a year, whatever that number is. But yeah, you probably need to 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 work um, at least part time. But there but there's also a fact that she's paying off her mortgage. So maybe she's probably spending more now than she will be. So I don't know what those figures are, but all I'm saying is you probably in seven years have about twenty five thousand, thirty thousand to work with from your portfolio. So the math again, Lauren, is that you have around four hundred fifty thousand. Is that what you said? Yeah, currently. Four hundred and fifty thousand dollars today. You're saving roughly thirty thousand dollars a year. Oh, by the time you reach age 40 in seven years, given what rate of return did you use? I use 7%. Right. So you get 7% on your money. You save $30,000 a year. You have $450,000 today. You'll roughly, the portfolio will grow to a million. Yeah. Given those assumptions. So you don't want to pull out at age 40, probably any more than 2%, 2 to 3 yeah, right. yeah. So I'm, I said two and a half to three. So, so twenty five thousand yeah. dollars is two and a half percent of a million. So if you're spending fifty grand, well, you got to get part time work to make twenty five thousand to make up the shortfall. That's exactly how you look at it. And if you're forty years old, I would imagine you're going to get bored at some point. Yeah, you probably want to work anyway to make something, or you, you know, keep a little bit busy. I don't know. <laughs> I could imagine. I could not imagine. Just yeah. What would you do? My my life expectancy would be <laughs> would be four, four years. So oh then you can God. spend fifty percent of your yeah, portfolio that, every year. Yeah, my distribution rate is going to be so high. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. Let's get out of here. That, all right. Thank you, Andy. Wonderful job today. Thank you. All right, Big Al. All right, uh, fun. I'm Joey Anderson. We'll see you all next week. Uh, keep the emails coming in. Uh, the show's not e not good at all. It'd be really bad without you. So uh, <laughs> thanks for your emails, and we'll see you next week. In the derails at the end of the episode, we've got who's who and how many people asked Joe and Al, Lord Fletcher's in Minnetonka, and doing the show three times. So stick around. Help new listeners find your money, your wealth by subscribing, liking, and sharing the show on YouTube, and by leaving your honest reviews and ratings in Apple Podcasts and any other podcast app that accepts them, like Amazon, Audible, CastBox, Good Pods, Pandora, Player FM, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Podknife, and Spotify. Stitcher users, your app will be discontinuing services at the end of August, so please make sure you find and follow YMYW on any of these other fine podcast apps before then. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors, a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. Hey, welcome back. Show's called Your Money Well. Big Al Clopine here. Hey, really? My name's Joe Anderson. Uh, yep, I am here. Yep, answering your money questions. Go to yourmoneywealth.com. You know, no one goes to yourmoneywealth.com and clicks on that stupid button now. They don't. <laughs> how do you figure? That's how we get all these questions. We have 13 pages of questions for you to answer. I, I, I'm just listening like you know what you're talking about. Because, well, I don't know, didn't we look at some some Google analytics? And then, like, no one ever clicks on it, it looked like. Well, they, they tried and it didn't work. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it works again now. That's right. <laughs> All right. So it's, I guess some people are. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we do get a lot of questions, actually. We do. And where Minnetonka is. We do. Yeah, Lord Fletcher's used to hang out there Okay. quite often. Next to uh, Minneapolis somewhere? Yeah. Uh, Lord Fletcher's, is that a bar? That is a nice little um, afternoon quaint place right there on the lake. It's okay. world renowned. Got it. Is that the same lake where you went ice fishing? Uh, no. No? Okay. I went ice fishing in uh, a little bit northern. Further further north. Yeah, further north. In the north country. <laughs> Got it. It wasn't even in the north country. It was like out west. Got it. Okay. So, um, yeah. 
Uh, uh, God, remember when we have to do the show twice? Remember three? We did it three times. Remember? Oh, we would do it here. Then we would do it. We we would do the a, same show. We would uh-huh. we do a L.A. and a San Diego show <laughs> and an L.A. show, and then we would do another San Diego show. <laughs> Why? Okay. I'm, I'm glad remember, you don't do that anymore. I remember thinking, why are we doing this? Everyone else does it once and it gets syndicated. I don't know what we were doing. 